Hello Aries! Welcome to your 2019 six-month forecast. We are looking into the energies for you for January through June. Now this is going to be for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, yes, but I'm not um, guiding it towards it being anything specific. So it's for all of those signs, yes, and anything that comes through uh, I'm sorry, uh, for those planets. Anything that comes through, um, messages, general messages, could be applicable to you for that month, all right? This is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your personal life for the next, for the upcoming six months, please go ahead and email me. These readings are available. So what I'm going to be doing for this reading, I'm going to be using the uh, major arcana of the Dreams of Gaia Tarot here, okay? And this deck is fairly new to me, so I am going to be using the book a little bit to get into some of the definitions, but as always, I am going to be intuitively looking into things and seeing what comes out, seeing what I pick up for you guys. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take pull one card for each month, and then I am going to clarify with the Tarot, and this is the Crystal Visions Tarot deck. All right, so without further ado, let's just get started here. We're gonna get started with the Dreams of Gaia. Actually, let me do it this way. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please give us the best messages for all involved, for Aries, for the six months, the first six months of 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so I'm going to get started by pulling cards here. Let me just shuffle these up. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, we've got January here. Looking for February. February. Okay, we've got Wisdom. All right. March. Perception. April. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. April. The Maiden. Let's do it this way. May, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Love, aw, and finally, June. June, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Aries, June, there it is, the crone, okay, so, What's looking like is happening for the first six months of your year, um, there's, I, I'm, I'm going to say there's change here. For January, what do we have for January? Knowledge. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So just as a six-month overview right now, just looking at the, at the major things that are going to be going on or could be, potentially be happening for you, Aries, for 2019. Um, January is starting out as a month where you're starting the year learning. Um, and I feel like it's, it's really what's, just, what's going to be happening is you're most likely going to be putting some pieces into place. You're going to be, uh, collecting your, the wisdom or the, excuse me, the knowledge that you have acquired over the year of 2018, because 2018 was a very challenging year for many of us. We really, all of us, many of us learned a lot about ourselves during that um, month, or I'm sorry, not that month, that year. And so a lot of things may have changed for you over 2018. And so as you move into 2019, in January, you're, it looks like you're going to be putting those pieces together. Um, and as you move in through February, you're translating it into wisdom, okay? It's like you're taking stock with knowledge. You could even be learning something new. Some of you could be starting um, a new project, a new hobby, maybe starting to learn something, taking a new course. Uh, you could even be setting up going into 
uh, getting into some sort of schooling, some sort of class, some sort of training. And then moving into February, you're, it's like the, all the pieces are put together and now you're translating it into wisdom. Um, you're, you're really, it's almost as if you're opening the box of this knowledge that you have created or that you have received. Um, it's like a, this package of knowledge has come to you through January and now in February, you're putting that into place and you're, um, you're translating it into wisdom that you can then teach to others for some of you. For others of you, you're kind of, because wisdom kind of looks like the hermit, right? So you could really be going within and further assessing, put, putting these pieces together with not the, the, the knowledge that you uh, acquired. Moving into March, you have perception. So a lot of this wisdom is pr the knowledge and then the wisdom and now the perception is coming into play. And you're probably seeing things from a much different point of view. In March, things could really change for you. Um, perceptively, uh, the way you see things, the way you experience things, the way you approach things even could change because your perception has changed or expanded. This could be a month where you're really in tune or getting further into tune with your psychic abilities. Some of you may even start um, a course within your psychic abilities in order to uh, expand. Um, and actually, what I'm seeing for some of you now, moving back, it, with knowledge here, some of you may um, have come to the point where you're now just starting to open yourself up and learn about what it is to be connected to extrasensory perception. And, um, you know, you spend Jan you could be spending January and February trying to like really assess that, trying to understand where you are in your psychic development. And then by March, now you're really starting to practice. You're really starting to look at the world from this new point of view of perception, okay? That's just for some of you. Moving into April, we have the maiden. And springtime does kind of start, well, it starts in the beginning, of, at the very end of March, I believe. But um, here, this is really talking, this to me looks like springtime, all right? The maiden. The maiden is about abundance, fertility, uh, freedom, um, could be virginity, but it's not, it doesn't have to be virginity. It, it also symbolizes sexuality. There could be some, some of you actually could really connect with someone that really opens you up, maybe sexually or emotionally, someone that you really connect with. This could also be, uh, with perception here, you could wake, you could uh, wake into seeing someone differently than you had in the past. And now with the maiden, it's like there's this abundance of fertility or this abundance of energy with between the two of you and something really flourishes and grows. I'm kind of, it's interesting because I'm kind of starting to get a little bit, I'm getting a little bit of an empress energy, but it's not a fully grown empress. It's like the empress, it's the maiden um, it's the empress in her like youthful form, not necessarily in her, maybe, like, I want to say like adult, fully grown form. Um, from there, into ape, I'm sorry, into May, excuse me, into May, then you have love. So there could be a relationship starting to brew, like there really could be love expanding between you and another partner. Um, this could also be love for the self. Okay. And then um, with the crone here, I, crone is an energy of uh, following your own path, going off the beaten path. Um, some of you, I'm getting specifically that there's an idea of not necessarily needing to have children. Maybe if you're a, a person of a man or a woman of a certain age and you're like, you're not married or you're, and you don't have kids yet. Um, I really see you letting go all types of uh, societal norms or pressure to conform in that way. Okay. Um, but also the crone is a very wise being. So it looks like in your first six months of 2019, there is all kinds of wisdom and intellect and growth that's happening for you. If if and if if come come March, if you're not necessarily connecting with another person like on a soulmate level in a romantic way, I really see you becoming very abundant with this 
energy of uh, wisdom and knowledge that you're uh, acquiring and then that translating into greater love so this could be self-love this also could be unconditional love because of the what you have learned throughout you know 2018 and now what you're putting into practice in the beginning of 2019 and then with the crone here it's like you have this unconditional love for yourself and for the world around you. You have this deep understanding. And so it really puts you off on your own path. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing off the beaten path for you, Aries. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to collect all of these. And I'm going to go into a bit of um, clarification for each month. So starting with January, let's see... What let's get some of the keywords here for knowledge, and this is card number nine, and so that is an ending. Okay, nines are about endings, tens are completion. Um, hold on, sorry guys, I gotta find it here. <laughs> wow, the the definitions in this book are really long so it sometimes it takes a minute sorry guys sorry about that all right here we go knowledge ah, wow and actually yeah i just realized january is about knowledge february is about wisdom and that's and they're sequential knowledge is number nine and wisdom is number ten so you have endings it's like um once you get into january you have things really coming to an end in january and you're learning you're acquiring you're you're collecting the knowledge that has come about through from everything that you've experienced up until now, you know, through tw from 2019 through now. And then in February, you're putting it into wisdom. The completion is coming into play. So let's see. Knowledge. Knowledge, skills, understanding, training, education, and practical experiences. Key phrases. We exist to learn as we learn to exist. Knowledge is power. Has your past education served you? Do not limit your potential for learning. A time of new study and learning. An opportunity to learn about people and the world. Surround yourself with books and information. Does bias and unf unfounded prejudice close you to new knowledge? Improve upon the knowledge that you have. Where is your knowledge taking you? Does what you are learning now serve a practical purpose? Create a better future for continuing your studies. Okay? So this is definitely going to be a month about learning, um, taking what you have experienced and pulling the nuggets, you know, the, the, the pieces of knowledge, the, 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 the specifics, the lessons out of them, out of the, the experiences that you've had and growing through it. It's almost as if you're preparing to assimilate the wisdom that you have acquired from your experiences. Let's just get a little bit of clarification here, please. Spirit for knowledge for Aries in January. Okay. There we go. All right. Underneath the deck, you have the Three of Swords. Wow. So what I'm seeing is... Um, uh, 2019, uh, excuse me, 2018 was, there was a lot of heartbreak, potentially. There were a lot of, uh, what the Three of Swords is saying to me is there was a lot of opportunity to learn. And this was uh, through a lot of uh, interpersonal experiences, relationships, networks, jobs, friends, family, romance. There was a lot of heartbreak, but all of that heartbreak served to teach you about life, what it is you came here to learn. It was all part of a lesson. Um, yeah, you have the Eight of Pentacles, and you also have, wow, look at that, the Eight of Wands, all right, lots of abundance, death, and justice. So the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. There could be a lot of communication throughout the month of January, um, but what I'm really getting is swift movement, okay? And lots of abundance. There's, you're probably going to be working a whole lot. You really could be working a whole lot. I feel like for some of you, this is going to be working, um, working in entrepreneurship endeavors, working on your own. Some of you are actively 
um, how we're actively work or if you're watching this in December or if it's not December, now it's January or whenever that you're watching this, December of 2018, I feel like was a really preparatory month for you business wise. And now come January, you have, you're either working towards a brand new skill or you're putting that, the skills that you put into place um, and you really utilizing that knowledge. But I really see you moving quickly, moving swiftly. You're very focused on what it is you want to accomplish and you have the abundance of the universe behind you. And then here you have judgment and death. Okay, so there's definitely a transformation. Judgment is a, a card of resurrection. Um, you could... For some of you, you could receive some sort of court judgment, a legal judgment here if you've been dealing with a court case, transforming you through that period that you went through um, it, during that court case. Could be a divorce or whatever, maybe some sort of business matters. But there is definitely a, a rebirth happening in January. This could be in the works. It could have been in the works throughout maybe December, maybe even November, or at least throughout the course of 2018. Now in 2019, you have this, uh, I mean, serious transformation, death and judgment. Judgment is about resurrection and rebirth. Death is about the same thing, transformation, uh, death and rebirth, transformation, that sort of thing. Okay, so January looks really nice for you here. Excellent. All right, so now moving into February, you have wisdom. Okay. So let's uh, let's dive into the book a little bit here. Let's get some information. Keywords for wisdom. Okay, wisdom. Knowledge, understanding, awareness, self-knowledge, illumination, introspection, withdrawal, insight, common sense. You are here to become wise. Knowledge does not make you wise. Wisdom is learning from one's mistakes. Apply knowledge, logic, and common sense. Learn from more than just books. Seek out your elders. Take a break, oh, I'm sorry, time to break a cycle. Wisdom is understanding. Wisdom is loving the whole. Know and love your shadow. You are, you have unlimited potential. The road ahead leads to many destinations. So like I said in the beginning, you're taking this knowledge that you've been acquired, have been, have been acquiring, and you, or you started acquiring in January and putting it into use with wisdom. You could be withdrawing a little bit, um, but I really see that you're taking this wisdom that you've acquired and you're really putting it to good use. You're allowing it to shine. You could be trying to, working towards teaching others through the wisdom that you acquired. And even if you're not really try, actively trying to do that, I kind of see you doing it by default in some cases. Okay? But yeah, wisdom is very much like the hermit. So so February might be a little bit of a, of a, of a reclusive month for you. Um, that doesn't really surprise me. I know like here in... I'm in the Northeast United States. It tends to be pretty, I mean, February is winter, all right? So it's it's usually a pretty slow, cold, solitary type month. It could be. All right, one more stuff. So let's get some clarification here for your month of February. Wisdom, please, Spirit, thank you so much. Ooh, there we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we've got... Underneath the deck, you have the world. So there's definitely a completion happening here, and it's so funny because not only do you have the world, but you have the Ten of Swords, you have the Fool, all right? And as I was saying before... Um, Knowledge, being card number nine, is an ending, okay? Uh, and I'm seeing you really closing a book of your life, uh, maybe even a chapter, but it feels like you're closing out a book of your life. And then for February, you have the completion. So you're taking all of this knowledge that you've acquired and you're 
putting it into use. You're basically completing the cycle. And here you go. I mean, here's the world. The world is saying it right here. There is a major completion of a cycle happening in February for you, okay? On top of that, you have the Ten of Swords and the Fool. The Fool is, um, a, a, is that rebirth that you were going through in January. The Fool is starting uh, something new, is, jump, is um, taking a leap of faith, cre uh, uh, starting a new cycle. After the world, you circle back to the Fool, okay? And then with the Ten of Swords, there's definitely completion here. The worst is behind you. I'm really getting an energy that... Aries, you have really learned some valuable, valuable lessons. And in February, you're bringing it to completion and you're starting over. You're Well, yeah, you're starting over in a sense, but you're basically just starting a new cycle. You've got the King of Swords. You've got the Eight of Pentacles again. You've got the Lovers and you've got the Five of Swords in reverse. The Five of Swords is in reverse. So first and foremost, February is still going to be a month where you're still doing a whole lot of work. Now, some of you could be, I mean, you're really focused on your finances. You're really focused on your career. Especially if you are starting a new career, okay? You're still in that mode from January. That's definitely uh, um, carrying over. But I, I'm also seeing some of you potentially working on a relationship here. King of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, and the Lovers, okay? You could be connecting with someone, someone new potentially, or um, it doesn't have to be someone new because with the Five of Swords in reverse, I'm getting a sort of reconciliatory energy even if only just in the form of laying down any sort of conflict that you may have with somebody, okay? This could be someone from the past, but it also could be you basically taking the guard off of your heart. And um, that definitely comes from, because with the Three of Swords that came out underneath the deck for January, that really... You, now, with all the knowledge that you you acquired, and now putting that into practice with wisdom, I really feel like some of you are are thawing out your heart. You're using this King of Swords energy to say, "All right, well, look. Yes, I went through X, Y, and Z in this situation with so and so. Potentially, this person that's now coming back, or you're reconciling with, or just someone from the past that you've completely let go of. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a better relationship with someone else in the future. And that's really what the King of Swords is saying to me here. And um, in, in the focus of love, you could be working towards having some sort of reconnection or having some sort of soulmate partnership with the lovers here. All right. Now, if this is not about business, or I'm sorry, not about love for you, this is about business and you're keeping your eye on the prize, you're focused, you're determined, you're doing what it is you need, you know that you need to do to survive and to strive and to thrive. And there is a major balance here for you. I'm definitely seeing masculine and feminine energy coming into play here to balance out for you, to really get this work done, to get your career off the ground. With the Five of Swords, I, I feel like there, if there was any sort of com competition, that's going to be falling by the wayside now. And it's only, and it's mainly because, number one, they could just be withdrawing because they recognize that they really can't stop you. But number two... Um, well, they can't stop you mainly because you're in alignment with yourself. You're in alignment with the universe, with the higher self, with God. So you can't really stop God. But also, um, I just feel like many of you could just be surpassing these people. And it's like they really just can't even touch you anymore, okay? So that's pretty good, Aries. That, sound, that looks great, all right? So now let's get into March. Perception. So it's, it's as if the progression here, you went from knowledge to wisdom, and now perception. So it's like you went through this hermit period, potentially, in February, and now things are starting to open up in March. At the end of March, we do have the spring solstice. I believe it's around, it's somewhere around the 20th of March, I want to say. Um, and so things start to thaw out, okay? Things start to brighten. Things start to get a bit warmer. And... Um, Four of Pentacles. All right, so the Four of Pentacles just jumped out here. For some of you, you're seeing, you're starting to see areas that you need to start letting go of some things. Spring cleaning, 
Absolutely. That could be something for some of you guys. But I'm really seeing the, the ice starting to melt and you really starting to see things much clearer than you ever have before. And that has a lot to do with the knowledge and wisdom you have been, you have acquired and put into place here. Um, and like I said, for some of you could be starting some courses on developing your psychic awareness. Um, some of you could even just become much more interested in psychic ability. It's almost as if... <laughs> funny because as I'm saying that my right ear just got a twinge of ringing it's an incredibly high-pitched sound but some of you actively can't really ignore you can't hide from your extra sensory perception any longer and so it's almost as if you're forced to do something about it but I don't see that being a reluctant thing I see that kind of as like you're you're almost giddy or excited about it for some of you because it's it's a new frontier for you to explore it's like brand new it feels exciting i mean you did you had the fool in february where you were starting you were embarking on a brand new journey you're going taking a leap of faith and that really could be like the knowledge that you acquired in january throughout that you were assimilating throughout january you have a flyer here Oh, goodness, you have a few flyers here. Wow. So this is a specific message for some of you. Hmm. Um, but this isn't necessarily you. This is someone that you're connected with. Oops. This is someone that you've been connecting with, and that, this feels like an old person. This is a specific message for some of you. In the month of March, there could be someone really watching you. Now, someone may be wanting to... Someone may be wanting to um, approach you. This could be someone new, but the, the, the main feeling that I'm getting is someone is watching you here in March. And they probably were already watching you a little bit, but for something, something, ha something could be happening where you really get elevated and now someone is really watching you with the Page of Swords. Strength in Reverse is talking about fear. It's like they're afraid of approaching you. And then you have the Six of Swords, Three of Cups, and the Eight of Cups all in reverse. This person could not walk away from you. Could not walk away from you, could not walk away from the situation. And now in March, I'm getting that they're really starting to see potentially the error of their ways or they're starting to perceive you differently, which is causing them to want to maybe approach you or say something to you, maybe even try and reconcile with you with the Three of Cups here. But there's blockage. Now, they could also have been, they could also be in a situation where, um, they're starting to see you as you truly are. They're starting to see past their ego and who you truly are and what the situation truly was. Maybe something that they couldn't see before. They also could be seeing why, maybe potentially why they couldn't walk away from the situation here. Oh, shoot. I don't want to, I don't want a bunch of reversals. But anyway, okay. So that was just a specific message. But let's, I'm going to shuffle one more time and let's just get... I'm sorry, I lied two more times. <laughs> and let's just get some clarification for perception. All right. For Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, your month of March, perception. What you got for us, Spirit? Just some clarification, please. We've got... Okay. All right, all right, all right. So there's definitely... It's definitely going to be an illuminatory month here. For March, you have the Sun, you have the Seven of Wands, and you've got the Two of Cups. Underneath the deck is the Queen of Pentacles. Now, you could be dealing with a Capricorn. This could be a Capricorn here that's now really taking notice of you or is starting to see you differently. Um, this could be, it could be your energy too, um, you know, as a nurturer. Maybe you have Capricorn or another Earth sign in a major placement in your chart. Um, but this really could be a month of, and actually I did, I do remember saying in the beginning while we were going over, we were overviewing the six months, perception could be you seeing someone differently, a potential partner that you may not have seen them in that way in the past, or this could be someone seeing you differently, okay? Um, so we have a union coming 
together, a union of hearts here with the two of cups. All right, and the sun. I really feel, and the sun is is a very much about illumination. So I really feel like this is going to help your perception. Now, seven of wands. I really feel like there still could be some boundaries, but but this is just the very beginning of potentially uh, a relationship starting. You may meet someone new and that the per their perception is they see you as some sort of divine being, someone that they want to get to know, want to, um, you know, communicate with a little bit. And so, sorry guys. And so they're wanting to open up to you. Okay, but there's still a little bit, I, I really am picking up that there's still a little bit of guardedness. There's a little bit of, um, of boundaries, which is okay, because again, this is just the very beginning of some sort of connection here. Now, otherwise, outside of love, I am seeing that there is a balance here within you, okay? Balance of masculine and feminine, there is a union of of the self here and that's really illuminatory it's really allowing you to shine and you're i really feel, <laughs> i'm getting some sort of celebrity status for some of you um because of this through the seven of wands and the sun here you may be having to you know protect yourself a little bit put a little bit more boundaries but abundance like march is going to be i really feel like march is going to be a pretty abundant month for you aries both in love and career and finances, all right? So then, we're moving into April, we're officially in spring now, and we have the Maiden. Oh, I never read Perception. That's okay. We're gonna move forward to Maiden here. <laughs> all right, so what's come out so far? We have the Nine of Cups, the King of Swords, the Moon, and Strength, all right? Underneath the deck is the Fool. Okay, so now there really could be an energy of some sort of relationship happening. Um, I'm really, I'm, I am also seeing that you could be embarking on some sort of new, for some, I, I picked up briefly that there was like a, a, f um, a business opportunity that could be kicking off for you. But this also could be the start of a relationship. Nine of Cups, King of Swords, the Moon, and Strength. So there's definitely relationship energy coming through for April for you. And April is a time, is a springtime. Um, things are it's starting to get warmer. The flowers are starting to grow and bloom. The trees are starting to bloom and all that. And, you know, life is basically being regenerated back into the world. And that's definitely what I'm seeing here with the Maiden. There's some sort of wish fulfillment happening in, in, uh, in April as well. Now, I'm getting a bit of a honeymoon phase. And you're needing to keep, stay objective with the King of Swords. Because everything, it, it's not like everything, it, it's not like there are big secrets around you, but there is still some unsurety. There are still some things that are unclear, especially if you're just starting a new romantic relationship and you're needing to just have strength, have the strength to get through it. Okay. To see things as they truly are in that moment. And that doesn't mean like doom and gloom, like seeing things as they truly are in the sense that, well, this is just going to end anyway. No, that's not what we're saying here. We're saying just keep your wits about you. Stay objective. All right. But there is some sort of wish fulfillment. You could enter into a new commitment with someone. You could um, enter into a new business opportunity. But something that you've been trying to manifest over time is going to be coming into fruition or starting to with the Nine of Cups, potentially. Okay. I just want to see. Let's. I didn't read Perception, but that's okay. We're just going to keep moving. Um, with the maiden here, I do want to see if I can get, if there's anything I'm missing. Fertility, independence, self-esteem, esteem, uh, confidence, self-expression, self-exploration, self-interest, sexuality, creativity, uh, selfishness, codependence, and timid, uh, timidity. 
Follow your dreams. Discover your passions. Focus on self-discovery. Address self-imposed limitations and restrictions. Increased independence. Seek your own answers. Release feelings of fear and abandonment. Craving attention. Needing rescue. Express goals and desires. Be true to the self. Acting with empathy. Okay? Um, and fears. I mean, the moon is about your fears here. So that's why the King of Swords is coming through and saying you need to see, be as objective as possible. Work on seeing things as they truly are. Have the strength to persevere and get through it because I really feel like the Maiden is, the energies of the Maiden are going to, whatever's going on in this month for you, um, Aries, month of April, um, something could be happening. You could be connecting with someone that could drum up some fears from the past. Which really, this feels like it could be a test, almost, if you want to see it that way or explain or uh, uh, describe it that way, to see how much you really learn from the past, like say past relationships. Okay, cool. So now let's get into May for you, Aries. We have love. All right. So now, if you have been in some sort of, if you've been connecting with someone, um, and actually, you know what? I really feel like this could be the rekindling of some sort of relationship over time, okay? Um, maybe you guys decided to separate in January or sometime before January, and you spent like the first few months of the, of the year um, in separation, and now in May, you really could be coming back together again and something really could be rekindling. But also outside of that, I'm seeing that whatever connection some of you that some of you are developing in, you know, up until May could really flourish into love. I mean, love can also this card can also talk about, you know, is it love or is it just in, infatuation? But I really feel like for most of you, you were going through that process in April, trying to figure out if you were really like in love with someone or you really do have are falling in love with someone or if it's just, you know, lust or a pipe dream or something like that. But let's get some clarification here for Aries, for May, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what we've got for you, Aries. Okay. All right. All right. We've got a lot here. Um, let's see. One card did flip over. There we go. Nine of Wands. Okay. Underneath the deck, you've got the Queen of Wands. All right. You've got the Emperor here, the Knight of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, the Hierophant, the Sun again, Nine of Wands, and the Eight of Pentacles again. There is some sort of commitment that become, could be coming in. Some of you may be either getting a proposal in May or maybe even thinking about taking it to that level, but there's definitely commitment energy here between the Emperor, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Hierophant. And I really feel like for most of you, there could, there is definitely an energy of deciding that you would like to move forward to greater commitment with this person if you're connecting with someone. Six of Wands and the Sun. You could be connecting with a Leo or another Aries because we have the Queen of Wands and the Emperor here, a Taurus, maybe another Earth sign or another Fire sign. But I really feel like there's some sort of connection here that's developing. And by the time you get to May, things could be getting pretty serious. You know, with the Eight of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands, it could have been... There could be some opposition. This could be uh, maybe a, a challenging relationship, but one that is really helping you grow. Um, at the same time, with the Nine of Wands... You, I really feel like there's, a, but okay, with the Eight of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands, this is an energy, this is a combined energy of recognizing that you want to be in it for the long haul, or you're approaching the situation from the point of view of, of wanting to be 
in it for the long haul, okay? And with the Queen of Wands and the Six of Wands and the Sun here, I really, I'm hearing success and victory and um, abundance, attracting what it is you want to you. So some of you could be attracting this type of partner, this type of commitment. For some of you, you could really be stepping into that energy by the time of May. Um, you could really be in the position where you know, you're fully ready for true love and commitment and you're standing in your power and attracting this to you. I'm definitely seeing some sort of commitment coming in for some of you or working or starting to really work towards, if you already have connected with someone, starting to work towards that kind of commitment, okay? Yeah. But things could really be going very, very well for that relationship. All right. And so finally, for June, we have the crone. So I am going to read from the book for this a little bit. Let me just shuffle this real quick. All right. So the crone, card number six. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There it is. The crone. Keywords. Feminine power. Fearlessness. Authenticity. Individuality. Independence. New purpose. Freedom. And the shadow self. Key phrases. The woman who understands her true nature. Be aware of your choices. Be unafraid to walk your path alone. A life of your own design untapped power and potential, a fertile and productive future, a childless state, be unbowed and unapologetic, a respect and cherish your elders, a direct and forthright approach is needed. Do what is necessary, not what's expected. It is time to be fierce and fight back. Ooh, that's intense. <laughs> that is pretty intense. So, now, let's get into some clarification for the crone. I really feel like someone is really taking an unconventional approach to life here. This could be in this relationship, if there is a relationship that's budding for you. It could be approaching that relationship differently. I really feel like some of you may be putting some sort of structure into place in your relationship that's not normal, that's not typical that's it's that could be fairly unconventional um, but this is all because you both recognize that it's right for you it works for you so whatever anyone else has to say about it really is none of your business <laughs> it's none of your concern you don't even have to worry about it um, I'm, I'm hearing going off the beaten path in relationships and in finances in career this is really about owning your power, knowing who you truly are, honoring and respecting your elders and your ancestors, but still doing your own thing, okay? And by June, you could really be in a very, very powerful state, Aries. All right, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got. All right. For June, for Aries, Chrome, please clarify, Spirit. Woo! Two of Swords. Woo! All right. Underneath the deck is the Knight of Wands. To me, this is my spiritual warrior card, so you really, I'm really off the beaten path is, is, is expected and unexpected. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, <laughs> but maybe that's some that will resonate for some of you. Wow, we've got the Nine of Cups again. We've got the Page of Pentacles. I'm sorry, the Page of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, but with the Two of Swords. We have the Nine of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Wands. Three of Wands, High Priestess, and the Five of Wands in reverse. So, yeah, 
definitely off the beaten path here. Page of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, but also with the Two of Swords. There might be a little bit of anxiety. There might be a little bit of fear related to moving forward in this new way. Um, some of you may be resistant to moving in this new direction, but there's inspiration towards doing it. And there's definitely a brand new start, a brand new commitment, um, a brand new business opportunity, something like that. Or it, or it could be that things really expand in a brand new way. But also the Two of Swords could symbolize that you're kind of blindfolded to a certain element of it. There's some sort of surprise that could be coming through in June for you. But this is because you have been working towards maintaining your own authenticity, okay? We have the Nine of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Wands. So uh, carrying over this relationship message, by June, there could be a marriage. There could be a proposal. You could, maybe you could even potentially be moving in with somebody. I'm seeing Four of Wands, Four of Pentacles, and the Nine of Cups. It's like I'm seeing two people coming together and combining their finances, potentially, maybe even thinking about doing that. And then finally, with the Three of Wands, the, uh, the High Priestess, and then the Five of Wands, which is in reverse here, there is chaos and conflict that's being released. Um, wisdom is coming into play, uh, intuition is coming into play, and there's waiting for a return on an investment here with the Three of Wands. Um, some of you could be hearing, you could finally get a message actually about something that you may have been waiting for, some sort of, something you may have invested in potentially earlier in the year, maybe in 2018. Um, and there's, there's been some conflict, some uh, some confusion, maybe some chaos surrounding the situation. But with the High Priestess, I'm getting that some sort of knowledge could come through, some sort of secret could be revealed that helps to calm the madness. Now, for some of you, also, there is an energy of um, waiting for your ships to return or your a return on your investment. And there is a lot of secrets surrounding it. But you have learned to release any sort of fear or chaos surrounding the situation. And you're kind of just going with the flow here. June is looking like a pioneering type of month for you, Aries. So that could be really great. A lot of potential for growth. Definitely some new opportunities here with the Ace of Pentacles. Some of you may even be starting a new job like that could be you going off the beaten path here with the crone all of the knowledge and the wisdom that you've been acquiring for the throughout the first six months well yeah the first six months is now actually putting be putting being put into place here for you you know and you've gotten into this place of self-love which could potentially be happening throughout may and now by june you're ready to step out on your own and to do things like I said, or like the book said, do things because you need to, do what's necessary, not because you're supposed to do something. Do what's right, excuse me, do what's right. I really see you doing, starting to do things for sake of the greater good, not just because society tells you to. All right, Aries? So there it is, your six month forecast for 2019. January through June. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you would like a personal look into your first six months, go ahead and give me an email and I would be very happy to do so. Yes? And this could doesn't have to be just the first six months. If, say, it's like February and like you're wanting to get a six-month forecast, it could, it could be, you know, starting from January, moving to June, or it could be from that moment in time. Six-month forecasts can happen at any moment. Yeah? Take care, guys. Take care, guys. Much love. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I wish you a very happy and healthy first six months of 2019. Mwah! Bye.